Well, good morning, everyone. I hope you're all good. Welcome to the garden this morning. Um, still dark out. It's about six something, six o'clock or so. Been up uh, drinking coffee, watching videos, and all that nice stuff. So um, anyway, we'll look at some blooms first. And I gotta wait for daylight for the rest of the video. Yeah, today's video, um, I want to talk about a couple things. Uh, you know, my warm, cool growers and cool growing orchids and stuff like that. How I uh, manage to grow them. So we're going to jump into that in a second. Oh, we got another one opening up. That's nice. Really like this orchid. Glad I got it. That magenta on the lip really is stunning. So, and we're waiting on other blooms to pop open here. I wish they would. I'm anxious to see that. I've never grown this species before. And we got a new uh, species that's uh, throwing out a spike too this morning. So I kept wondering about it and I was like, you know, why isn't that turning into a pseudobulb? And it's like, oh, because it's a spike. So yeah, we lost a few blooms on this guy. We need to find a bigger pot for that. Anyway, here's the new spike coming. This is Ancistrochelus uh, Rothschildianus. Uh, little pseudo bulbs look like little Hershey kisses. And uh, somebody told me that this one was a really hard one to grow, but uh, I don't know. It seems to be coming along pretty good for me. But uh, as you can see, it's getting a spike. So that's kind of cool. All right, we'll come back when it's daylight. We'll see you then. Okay, so we're back now talking about cool and cold growing orchids that I grow. Um, we'll start out with uh, a native species here. This is Epidendrum canopsium or magnoliae, Epidendrums parkinsonianum and fulcatum. Uh, both are from Mexico. The parkinsonianum goes all the way down into Central America. They have been reclassified as coilostylus. Here is a true Lelia. We have another one coming in. This is a uh, Lelia Gouldiana, and it's from the state of Hidalgo in Mexico, a cold grower, as well as the autumnalis that's coming in. And uh, this one here is extinct. All right, a cool growing Lelia, which is now a Catlia from Brazil. This is a uh, Lelia Jungiana, which has a little bit of a nutrient deficiency, as you can see. Uh, the media had broke down and all that and uh, we switched it out sterilized the uh, wood slap box and all that and this here is a bubble film this is bubble film everhardii it's from burma china um, vietnam areas like that um, and it's a cold grower or a cool grower beautiful pink umbels on that and uh, yeah, in the summertime, this guy just shuts down completely. It says, oh, I'm not having it. It's too hot. So it'll start growing back in the, when it gets winter and starts cooling down here. But how do I grow these guys? Well, I grow them mostly up on the porch, except for the Jungiana, which that grows low to the ground, hanging in a tree off of another um, orchid. But this wall here is one thing that's key. It stays cool during the, the hot days that's cool to the touch see and uh, another way is if it gets up into the 90s here what I do is I spray this wall down and the evaporation keeps things a little bit cool too especially on the floor here because the Sun is like it's full Sun right here there's my big feet but yeah it's uh, th this floor heats up and I I hit it with water and uh, spray the back wall and there's always a constant breeze here you can see that orchid moving there's always a, a nice constant breeze coming through on this porch so that helps keep things cool too but you won't see things like odontoglossums miltoniopsis cool to cold growing cymbidiums here now i can do some warm growing cymbidiums and you might see some in the collection later on down the road so, but anyway, that's how I basically deal with the cool and cold growing. Um, it's not perfect. 
you know, to grow some of the other ones, I'd probably have to have a greenhouse with a swamp cooler and lots of air movement. But that's key, is lots of air movement and uh, humidity with these guys. So, And some of your dens can take a lot of cold, too, like this Aussie uh, Kingianum here. That can take a lot of cool, too. So, But anyway, that's uh, the big secret of how I grow cool growers. It's not really a mystery or anything, but it, uh, cool growers, like I say, it just invokes the images of uh, montane, the tropical montane um, cloud forests in Central, South America, Asia, and stuff like that. Beautiful orchids grow there, by the way, like Draculas, Masdevallias, stuff like that. I can't wait to see this one, the Ancestral Chylus. This is really just so cool supposed to be difficult but mm, it's rocking I got that in a tree fern pot even orchid web says this thing is a little bit difficult so yeah it's in a tree fern pot doesn't seem too hard to grow likes to be moist and then you gotta let it dry out when it's not growing it's deciduous also the beautiful little bulbophyllum or alien Got some more blooms coming up in there. These guys should be opening in a week or two. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. Get out in your gardens and show your plants some love, and uh, we'll see you real soon. I'm going to do a video on frankincense soon, and we'll talk to you later. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.